Oops. Still cold. Ugh. What a piece of sh**. 10,000 subscribers. Holy sh**. How did I do that? Most of the time when I'm prototyping, um, I'm working on a schedule and I'm mostly out of time. And sometimes I need a little PCB. And when I need a little PCB, usually I have to create my file, of course, um, create a Gerber file, which is like a product file, then I send it over to China. They will manufacture the board, send them over, which takes about a week. They're not bad, don't get me wrong, but it takes a while to get them. And I need them right now. So I thought maybe I can make my own PCB using the case for the laser. Therefore, I got me some PCBs here, some wafers from Amazon. They're super cheap. I think I got 15 for 10 bucks or something. Um, it's basically PCB um, covered with a very thin um, coating of copper. Um, it's lagging the uh, photo sensitive or light sensitive coating on this. Um, so that's m probably why they're so cheap. And then I need some spray paint. I need some acetone. I need some uh, iron chloride, which I come back in a minute to. Uh, some sandpaper, very fine sandpaper, some gloves of course and some protection gear for the acid later on. Now the idea is to um, put a very thin coating of spray paint on it and use the same principle as I did in my uh, metal marking videos uh, by rastering off um, the excess paint and then we will etch this. For etching, as in Europe everything is regulated, it is quite hard here to get um, this stuff. Uh, there are multiple ways of etching um, PCBs. I'm not a pro in etching PC or manufacturing PCBs. This is like a test or an experiment for me, but um, I'm using uh, iron chloride. I ordered this whole thing once uh, by mistake because I think I wanted to order some iron oxide and I ended up uh, ordering iron chloride. So uh, these two things are probably the only things you would need to order. I think everything else you will probably have in your man cave. So let's get right into it. So for the first step of my experiment, I want to rough up this copper surface uh, with some very fine uh, sandpaper very carefully because it's very thin. So uh, I do this in order to remove any, uh, any dirt and uh, also I think that the lead solder or the solder later on will have a better grip when we get rid of all the dirt and oxidation. Well there is no oxidation on it in this case but um, I think it just helps. All right, next step will be we need to clean this with some acetone. I will put this over here and then I will get me in some, some paper because as you can see, I already removed some of the yellow markings on my, on my uh, cutting board here. Let's use some acetone and we simply get rid of any, any fats or dirt that gather on there. And, uh, after that, we try not to touch this anymore, not the surface at least. And the final step before going over to the K40, we need some little spray paint on there. And uh, I can get this open because it is uh, securely childproof. And as I am a big child, I go off there. Uh, I prefer matte black. It absorbs a lot of light from the laser. So we don't need much power to get this off again. What did I do here? God, what is this? Did I spit on it? Now we leave this to dry and in the meantime I will um, start my uh, simple layout on the computer before moving over to the K40. Okay, so in order to make my PCB layout, I downloaded me a version of KiCad. KiCad is a open source free to download software, which is pretty cool because, um, let me show you. Um, it consists of everything you need to create your own PCB, even to send these or create the files you need to send over to China, for example, to have your proper PCB made. Um, in my case, um, I checked out some tutorials because um, I won't go into detail too much. Um, it is pretty straightforward and there are plenty of um, good tutorials online you can check out. So um, you have these icons here. Um, usually you go from left to right. So you start with the schematic layout editor where you build up your schematic. In this case, I already did something. I did something a little bit um, tricky. I um, ripped off uh, biglives.com's uh, supercomputer layout, um, which consists of um, little blinking LEDs. They have an integrated little blinking circuit and um, each LED has its own little uh, 440, 440 uh, ohms um, pre-resistor and we have a 5 volt 
voltage or five volt input. Now I go up here to the footprint editor, which basically is um, a little program that um, you will need to tell the software which, um, for example, which LEDs do you want to use? Do you want to use SMD LEDs or um, in my case, a, a five millimeter through hole LED? So as a standard 0 0.24 watts um, little resistor, which will be also a, pre um, a through hole resistor, not a um, SMD resistor. So um, you tell the software this by uh, going to the footprint editor. As I said, you will find plenty of uh, tutorials about this. I did this already. I um, go back here and now we go to the PCB layout editor. And um, I already arranged a lot of things here because usually the software will drop in all your parts into a big pile here and you have to sort everything out and it's numbered and it's already, it has little um, connection points to it. So it's not too complicated. It's really pretty easy. Even it looks, it may look a little um, confusing right now. So I already um, arranged everything to um, the size of my PCB here. Uh, now, the um, only thing I want to show you is here. You see we have a lot of layers um, that you can deselect or select. Uh, F stands for the front. This is the front side of our PCB, the back side of our PCB. In my case, this becomes the back later on because um, we will solder to this side and the LEDs will be on the other side. Um, so we don't need anything but um, the soldering pads and the tracer. So we can deselect all these layers here. And you see that everything starts to disappear and it leaves us with exactly what we need. This is basically what we want to engrave onto our PCB with the K40. Now, in order to bring this over to Coral Draw, we need to export this. So we go to File, Export, uh, SVG. SVG stands for um, Scalable Vector Graphic. And again, it um, gives us um, the option to select which layers we want to export. As I said, in my case, I only need this, the front um, side of my PCB. I can uh, choose between color and black and white. Ideally, we go with black and white because we know that the laser will cut or engrave everything that will be black in our design and um, leaves out everything that is white. So black and white would be perfect. Um, we have the option to mirror this because, um, of course, we have to mirror it because it will become the backside later on. Um, in my case, it doesn't really matter too much because everything is laid out pretty much symmetrically, um, but the, uh, the five volt input later on, but it doesn't really matter for me. Um, we go to export, which I already did, and then we come over here to uh, Cobble Draw, and I already imported this file. And you see it messed up some things here, but you see that our layout is there and it is already vectorized. So we have uh, multiple layers and we can se select everything and um, start deleting everything we don't need. So as all these um, weird things here. And um, it left me with one problem and I will show you this in a second. I will remove everything I don't want to see like this. And you see we have our layout in black and white, but there is one issue and I don't know what it is because I tried a lot and I tried to export in multiple formats and um, multiple layers and whatever and I could not find what the problem is. You can see that everywhere here the soldering pads are missing and I can't find any solution for this. If you know, please let me know in the comments because it's probably something pretty stupid. However, um, in order to get this fixed, I am um, simply uh, <laughs> uh, did a very simple stupid trick. I uh, select the circle tool um, color it black and I draw a circle that is about the size of one of these original solder pads and then I simply draw, drag them over to the center of um, each thing and when I press strg and d it duplicates this dot and we can fill them in where we need them like this. Now um, after doing this it leaves us with these um, with the white through holes which later um, will be the holes that we have to drill. Now um, the thing is, let me show you when I, um, I, let me just draw a little, uh, yellow circle. Let's say this is one of our led legs that will stick through one of these holes. And, um, if we think about it, um, the laser will remove, uh, everything that is, uh, well, everything that is black later on, but it, this will become copper. So um, it leaves us with, um, well, this, which will um, be removed. So um, we have to bridge this over later on with some solder, which usually is not a problem. But to make sure, I simply go ahead, I select them, and I delete all of these 
dots here. So it is as easy as this. Now, um, let's go over to, I already did this and you see this is my finished layout. So you see you have everything um, on here that's, um, yeah, everything ready to go more or less. Um, what we can do now is um, we can select the rectangle tool, uh, black, and we draw a rectangle. And now I go ahead and measure my PCB, which is 70 by 10. 70 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So um, in order to align this later on in the laser, um, I will make it a very tiny little bit thicker or bigger. So I go with 102 by 72. And it leaves us with this. Because uh, what I usually do is um, when I finished everything, I delete everything but this rectangle and I go ahead and make it transparent and uh, cut this outer line um, into uh, a piece of wood that I put in the laser bed that I uh, fixed down with some magnets. And uh, after that, I can align my PCB to this already, um, to this uh, lines, you know. So um, we are pretty much sure that we um, align everything correctly. Now, um, let me undo this. So um, we drag this over to our design, or we can also, we can first select this. We can group it. It is grouped already. Now I select this, I uh, go over here, I um, make everything white. And you see that it almost disappeared, which is weird because usually it would disappear all the way. Oh, I see, you see we have multiple layers here that we don't need, so I put this over here and I get rid of this. Sometimes it generates multiple layers, that it's just something that happens. Um, I can explain you exactly why this happens, but sometimes it happens. However, now we have our uh, rectangle and we have our white um, traces behind it because the order is messed up. We select the uh, rectangle. I go to order, send this black rectangle to the back. And there we have it. There is our layout. So we can um, throw this over to the laser. And I'm very curious if this will work. I already, this is like the finished version I just made. So yeah, I'm quite curious. Let's um, let's do this. Let's go over. So as I said, I will first cut a rectangle here. So um, that makes it easy to align the PCB later on. Let's go. For my first attempt, I use a setting of 15 milliamps, 200 millimeters per second in engraving mode. Now the result is quite promising, as you can see, the lines are crisp and no arrow lines from the K40. In order to remove the residue, I first uh, try rinsing the PCB under running water, what works somewhat, but I read that you could use um, alcohol. I want the unengraved traces to remain in perfect condition and spray paint should be resistant to IPA, so I uh, give this a try. Okay, well, that did not work. So, back to the drawing board. This time, in order to weaken the spray paint even more, I um, give it two passes and uh, only use water and a paper towel to remove the charring before I start my attempt of etching the copper away. Comes out that the remaining paint that I was unable to remove with the water now um, starts to peel off, probably because the copper underneath starts to disintegrate. So I stop the etching process, rinse the PCB again before putting it back into the solution. With all of the copper exposed, this time it seems to work perfectly. Next I need to remove the spray paint that covers the traces using acetone. Yep, 
this looks quite nice, I'm impressed. Even there is one little tracer that got eaten away a bit too much, but um, that's an easy fix. So note, for this technique, make your tracers and solder pads larger than you would normally. Um, it simplifies the whole process a lot. I use a 0.6mm drill bit and drill out all the holes. Doing this by hand of course makes some holes not 100% accurate, but I hope the solder will fill in the gaps. Speaking of this, soldering this PCB is a little harder than a professional manufactured one, but with some flux it will be much easier. Last thing to do is to add a USB plug. And yep, it works! Yes. In conclusion, this technique comes out to be working pretty well. Even better than I would have expected. I'm a little bit proud, I must say, even it still works. Um, on the downside, of course, this technique is not meant and not high resolution enough for making PCBs or to replace professional manufactured PCBs by any means. Um, you will never get the resolution to fit in little tiny SMD LEDs or SMD components or an Arduino board or something. But for a switch board with a switch and two LEDs on it, it would be perfect. And it, it takes about two hours from the design to the finished product. Um, no week of waiting and um, it will be enough for most uh, projects I'm making. So uh, I'm quite happy. Just keep in mind to make um, the solder pads and the traces pretty wide. The wider they are, the easier you have it um, by removing the paint later on and for etching and stuff like that. Speaking of that, I uh, tried out Plasti Dip Spray. Um, I used that in my um, metal marking videos as well. It's this kind of a spray paint and when it dries up it becomes some sort of a rubber skin that you can peel off. And um, after um, burning or charring this, um, I was not able to remove the residue with water or alcohol. Um, you can pull off some little strings here, but um, all after all, it does not really work. I tried to etch this and you see the outcome. Um, not very important, but on the side, um, so you know. Very important on the other hand is I opened a Discord server. That's something like a forum with diff different chat rooms where you can talk and uh, discuss about projects, your hobbies, um, techniques, how to do certain things. And um, I put a link in the description. I will be there as well sometimes chatting with you guys. Uh, also, you can of course leave me comments on this video as usual. Um, how would you, or how is your technique working? Um, what do you do different? What do I do wrong? Because I'm pretty sure I did something wrong. Um, even it is working and I'm still proud, but uh, yeah, it would be interesting to know. Uh, for the rest, subscribe to the channel, uh, ring this little bell because when you only subscribe it does not really make any sense because YouTube has this double feature. You have to ring the bell else you will never see uh, me answering your questions in the comments or see some new uploads. Um, that would be it. I need to go back to my project now that has been on the wait uh, line for two days. So um, I hope you enjoyed. I see you in the next one. Until then, see ya.